My intention is I want to take this to the next level, okay? I want to really push this, see how far I can take this, raise the bar. Okay, if that's my intention, it manifests. The thing with me, especially on this journey, I hate to plan too far ahead because I don't know what the next door is going to open and what's going to be there. And I think that if you, your intention is clear and you're in the right heart space, everything else falls into place. And that's how it's always worked for me. You know, really, like I didn't plan any of what happened the first six months of this year. I had an intention at the start of the year. I made a, a New Year's video and I set my intention publicly. And then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? And I, I, I love to live like that. I really do. There's a fire inside your heart. And let it light up the world. Light up the world. Love that, that word. So thank you for me. I really appreciate your questions. We got some good juice there. They're really good blueberries, man, eh? Did you get those here? Without the blueberries, the interview wouldn't have gone down. Wow. You study at Prague University and I introduced you to veganism. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I started getting into veganism about a year and a half ago and I came across your videos and you like really uh, made veganism about the moral issue for me, yeah. which completely changed my perspective on everything and yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for it. Wow, bro. That's awesome. What's your name? Mela. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank I'm you so much. proud of you, brother. Thank Keep you. up the good work, thank man, you. eh? Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. For you Thanks, brother. Thank you. All right, so we just did an interview. And now we're off to a cube of truth. Like they're showing people slaughterhouses where animals are being butchered and killed. And they're trying to convince people to stop eating animals. Good people do not want to be supporting the abuse and slaughter of animals. What if you found the best vegan burger in the world and you vlogged that? And what if you found some vegan fried people chicken? Go crazy for what it when, when I actually did vegan, you know, people like. I had like a lot of people commenting and saying Dude, like, there's a huge yeah. vegan market on YouTube, dude. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. no, huge. I, I, I do enjoy it. But like, like you said, um, I was doing it for the diet. Um, it's not a but, diet. But instead I should have been... You know, vegan, veganism is not a diet. It's a moral principle which extends to diet. Yeah. Because you can exploit and harm animals when it's nothing to do with diet. Yeah, okay. You know, you can use them in circuses, test products on their skin. Yeah. That's a moral principle extends to diet and encompasses all forms of animal exploitation. I, I think if you wouldn't do it to a human being, yeah. because you believe humans deserve the right to freedom, they don't deserve to be treated like products or slaves, okay, yeah. then we shouldn't be doing it to other sentient beings who have a similar sentient experience as we do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I'm with you. What's your name? Joey. Joey, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure yeah. to meet you. Are you from Prague? No, I'm from Australia. I travel around the world persuading people to stop harming animals. That man that I was debating with about welfareism last night, who is he? It's not animal rights activism, bro. It's not animal rights activism. But it's your point of view. I don't respect don't their form of... Uh, the, you don't know uh, the, the only, people. You don't know what they not, are doing. But it's not You're just making general assumptions from your point of view. No, I'm just saying it's not vegan activism, dude. It's okay. welfareism. I don't, I don't know him like personally, huh. but he's kind of... He likes to debate. Yeah. About well, promoting well, free range exploitation, and he said it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a good way to advocate. I think these organizations are more helping to people yeah. to, to make the change, some change, but not the animals. And that's, what, that's not what we do. Right? I mean, and if he did care about people, telling people to eat free range eggs when eggs are the, one of the most cholesterol laden know, foods you can eat, you don't have to tell me. I know like, this stuff. doesn't help people like either. Like, it's destroying the environment too. Free range beef is destroying the Amazon. You know, these, the, where they're grass feeding animals and they're
growing crops for animals and like if everyone chose high welfare beef, the land use alone would destroy the earth and you know all those animals get butchered and skinned alive anyway so we should all have a clear message which is to not exploit animals, to not harm animals and I don't think it does animals any favours to you know, suggest to people that there's humane meat. What was his goal yesterday? To try to convince me that welfare activism was an effective way to advocate. It's that vegan advocacy is not... It's not vegan advocacy. I told him that he cannot do outreach under Anonymous as a welfareist. Because let's just say he talks to 10 people. 10 people go away with the welfare, uh, the idea to go buy locally grown, slaughtered animals, supporting the humane meat industry, you know, or humane eggs or humane dairy. It's no humane way to separate someone's family and kill their children. It's just, I think it's disgusting. And if you care about animal rights, you know, real animal rights, we shouldn't be even suggesting that that's okay. Uh, and everyone who got together, really appreciate it. You did yeah. a really good job. Thank you. You're, you're doing the best job. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, how, I hope that you will uh, not be ill for the rest of your tour. Right. Yeah, well, soon, man. Thanks for coming. Say goodbye to everyone. Keep up. Wait, what's that? Keep up the amazing work, guys. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work, all right, everyone. Thanks so much for helping. Thanks for all you do for animals. Thank you so much, guys. See you Thank later. You. Thanks for everything. Yeah. All right. So that was the last event here in Prague. Really impressed with the team here. They've done such a good job. It was a big vigil. Great talk. Great venue. Amazing cube. Beautiful scenery here and we have to go back to the hotel, sort all our stuff out and we're going to fly and we're going to Switzerland so looking forward to that. Also this horrible flu that I've had is starting to subside so I'm starting to feel a bit better. Just got to power through. You get that on the big jobs though. Let's go. Get some chickpeas. <laughs> some to Let's get some smoked tofu. Make a sandwich with some sauce. Look at this. Come over here. How's that? See, they use this cow statue here to promote cheese. It's a product of animal abuse. Cows being slaughtered in slaughterhouses, stabbed in the throat, shot in the head. Cheese represents all of that. Why don't they show us a little screen with all the uh, murdered babies and, um, you know, the blood and screams of a slaughterhouse? All right, so what we've got here, um, this is just like a traveling activist little mill. We've been eating so much of this tofu, it's like smoked tofu, amazing, absolutely amazing stuff this is, delicious. Lots of canned beans, chickpeas and salad, bread as well, tofu and bread. I mean, I know it's hard to do no plastic when you're traveling, it's just something that you have to come to terms with, traveling activists. Mm. So just, you just tear open that beautiful bread, it's just soft and Delicious. Mm, a little bit of rocket on there. It's really salty, that tofu. With this bit, if you can get this tofu in Prague, oh my God, um, I'll damp off the rest of that. Just break it on top of this. I'm getting the greens in, this chickpea. Not really, I'll probably just drink it. What? Good for you. Chickpea juice is good for you. Dude, you eat tomatoes inside of yogurt and you're worried about me drinking chickpea water? Chickpea water. It doesn't taste very nice, but I'm just doing it so I don't have to drain the chickpeas. <laughs> Boom. Usually we have some nutritional yeast. I don't know where it is. Where is it? In your backpack? Yeah, right there. What, in what pocket? In the side pocket. Oh my God, dude, are you serious? I want to tell you a story about the nutritional yeast. This spilled out in my bag, all throughout my stuff. And I was like, oh my God, this is like gold. So I took all my stuff out of my bag, I scooped it up with my hands and put it back in here. So you, we have to use the great part of the nutritional yeast, otherwise we might get some bits of plastic and stuff from the bottom of my bag. We'll just, uh, just a bit like that on your salad. It makes everything gangster. We usually have sauce too, but Abdullah left it in the um, hotel room. I'm gonna say it was a bad move, but that's okay. Look at that. What is that called, uh? Well, I can't explain to you how delicious that is. Amazing. 
I'm gonna eat this food. I'm gonna see if I can work on a video because this is such a tight schedule. It's so hard to, to work on videos in between. Then we're gonna go straight to the airport and do it all again. When I saw your schedule, I was like, how is he going to do it? Vegans come here to bear witness for the first time and they are never the same afterwards. I think it changes us in a profound way. Absolutely stunned and amazed at how this is actually legal. Spiritually, I just assume and I like to believe that when you eat fear, violence, suffering and death that it manifests in some way. That was the original seed that was planted in my mind about karma. 